Hello and welcome to the stories of Northern Life from the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Today, Rick Datsun, our assistant curator at the museum, is joining me. This rock star has been crushing the drums for the community of Sault Ste. Marie and beyond for 43 years. If you've seen the band's Jerry Jackson Country Trio, West Wind, Shiloh, Champagne Jam, Road Fever, George Kingsman Show, New Country, Dusty Rose, Texas Street Band, Southern Guns, White Stallion, Border Rock, Iron Horse, Spider's Web, That's Chester, Fusion, Brass Tacks, Boneyard, Mojo, or Double Down, you've heard Rick Datsun perform. He's also performed with Shane Chrisholm, Paul Chapman, Don Reed, Mike Bork, Ray Lai, and The Storm, Donna Ramsey, Leroy Anderson, Tommy Hunter, and Roy Clark's band. He has, op he has also opened for Nazareth, Michael Wright, High Valley, and Crystal Shawanda. And I'm sure there are far more collaborations and performances in between. He was inducted into the Northern Ontario Country Music Association, Great Northern Opera, in 2011. He is also the man behind the music gallery here at the museum dedicated to the naturally gifted artists of the Sioux from the 1900s through to the 2000s. So with that all said, can you give us a drum roll please? For Rick Datsun. So hi. Hi Barney. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Uh, today we have you here in your music exhibit. Yes. Yay. I love it. <laughs> So let's start right at the beginning. At what age you started playing the drums? Ooh, well, I have a picture in here of me when I was about three years old, but I wasn't really playing it, kind of more of a toy thing. Right. My brother was a bit of a drummer for a little while, and I remember going, I was probably maybe five or six, uh, maybe a little bit older. He was playing in a band across the street in the basement. So I peeked through the basement window, and I <laughs> first time I got to see him play, that was really cool. And then after that, I think you give it up, and then it wasn't until about 1975 I started playing. But I didn't have drums until 1980, I think. Well. So I was air drumming for about five years, banging <laughs> on pots and pans and little buckets of uh, different levels of sand and chairs, whatever I could beat on. But it was the uh, the very first Kiss Live album that got me mm, going. I that heard, was my next question. What was the major influence? Yeah, I heard the, the, the drum drums. solo on there, and then it was like, wow. And then my brother showed me some stuff, a drummer from the early 60s named Sandy Nelson and Gene Krupa and all those guys, and I really got into it. Awesome. What was your first drum set? That was that one over there. It was a gold sparkle kit. It was a mixture of – it was a – pixie bass drum and a raven tom tom and a raven floor tom and then i had two bongos on a uh <laughs> i had a coat rack the four <laughs> legs on it and i bolted it to that and then i didn't uh, have any cymbal stands i had one cymbal stand it was uh actually a, a music stand with the little slot on top where okay. you slide the thing in so i put a popsicle stick in there and then stuck a cymbal on it <laughs> you gotta make do with what you got right <laughs> definitely i paid 25 dollars for that first kit and we carried oh. it home from Core Collegiate all the way back to the to where I lived <laughs> on First Avenue. <laughs> Crazy. Yep. So did you ever take lessons? Or are you all self-taught? All self-taught. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. That's incredible. <laughs> um, what are some musical artists that influence you the most in your music? Maybe one you started. As far as drummers? Yes. Uh, it'd be Peter Chris, of course, from Kiss. Mm -hmm. Um, Sandy Nelson. Uh, geez, all the albums that I bought back then to play along with that would be like Queen and Thin Lizzy and Alice Cooper. I'm just trying to think of all the old albums I used yeah. to have. Billy Cobham, he was a, a amazing drummer. I have a few of his albums. Uh, yeah, any, any of the concerts I saw at the Gar Memorial Gardens, oh, okay. Jerry Mercer from April Wine was a big influence. Used to see them at the uh, at the gardens all the time and go watch those big drum solos and yeah, there's bands like that, Triumph and Max Webster, whoever came to the gardens you go see and it was just a great oh, <laughs> influence under the lights. You know, you want to be a rock star one day, so 
Definitely. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what was your very first gig? Oh, that was at the New Toronto Hotel. Cool. Do you the... remember like what songs you played? Actually, I have a recording of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was all old, old country. It was me, a guitar player, and an old uh, keyboard, like an organ with a like, big Leslie wow. speaker. Yeah, the thing was heavy. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but we played stuff like a lot of Merle Haggard, uh, some keyboard stuff like Yellow Bird. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of country stuff. We had a girl that would come in on Saturday afternoon matinees because back then we played six nights a week. Wow. Yeah, and I was still in high school. I was in grade 10 when I started. Wow. So, yeah, I was making money playing, well, playing till 1 o'clock in the morning and then going to high cool. school next morning. <laughs> it was rough, but I did it. Stuck through it. Um, yeah, just all, it was all, all old country back then. Right. The, the Sioux was really popular for country bands. Yeah. There wasn't too many rock bars in town. Maybe the Eastgate. Uh, yeah, there wasn't too much. The Vic and the Royal, maybe. Interesting, yeah. 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 And were those bars? Were you playing? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I started in the bars when I was 17, and I had to, on the breaks, I had to go out into the lobby. <laughs> or I had to sit at a table where there was no beer. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Until I turned of age. Yeah. So do you remember your first gig at, like, when you were of age? Was that a di did it feel different? No, because I wasn't drinking anyways. Yeah. I couldn't drink and play. Yeah. So it didn't really make a difference. I was just able to sit and sit <laughs> talk to more people. <laughs> That's funny. Um, can you give us like a general list of the venues that you've played at? I'm sure it's a long list. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll start the New Toronto, the Old Empire, the Beaver, the Nicolette. The Algoma, uh, the Airways. I've done the Eastgate, the Royal. Haven't played the Vic. Um, the Esquire, mm -hmm. uh, Reggie's downtown, the old Roosevelt, which is now Jay's Piston Broke. Uh, Macaulay's, Haviland Bay. I've done a tour out west. Uh, pretty much every bar in town I've played. Cool pretty close to it is there a favorite venue or event the airways was a cool place out by the airport okay it's just uh, an empty field now but right on the corner of airport road and second line there was right. a great big bar called the airways wow. motor hotel it was beautiful yeah it, that was that was a cool place to play um the canadian was fun to play the caswell all the big bars there was a lot of fun was there ever like an odd one that was just like out of the ordinary that you played an event at or Something that sticks out as something different. Played some dives when we played out west. Mm. Some bars that you don't want to go back to <laughs> ever again. <laughs> there was a uh, one bar we played. I think it was it was in Saskatoon. I don't remember the name of it though. But it was full of criminals and prostitutes and i think somebody tried to set the place on fire three times that week when we were there <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that wasn't a good place that's crazy what was the name i can't remember the name of it probably blocked it out of my head <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> never go back there again well i watched um your youtube videos on your career oh cool i watched most of them so i saw that you played on like the canadian sulak tour boats the like yeah. chief shingwak like yeah, that, that must too. have been interesting that was playing fun. on a boat you also played in a lot of parades. Yeah. So move lots of moving. <laughs> a few parades. And moving um, uh, sets, I guess. That's pretty interesting. I'm sure that's different to play on as well. On a moving, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to make sure everything's kind of tied down or not going to fall. Yeah. Um, so how many drum kits have you owned throughout the years and how Ooh. have they evolved? I think probably... Um, just about 10, maybe just over 10 kits I've had yeah. since I started. I'd have to sit down and count them, but right now I have four. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to get rid of them, I assume. <laughs> well, no, I had one kit for many, many years, like one at a time, and then it just, the last five years, it was, uh, I saw another kit that I really wanted, and then, oh, well, I can afford this one now because it's cool, and then, yeah, so that's, and I just ended up keeping them. And do you have like one out or do you have all of them out to practice and play on? Um, I have my 
one practice kit that I keep set up at home, and it was a kit that I owned in the 80s, and a guy had it for about 15 years in his garage, just on, in cases. Wow. He bought them, never played them. Well, he played them for a while, then he put them away. Then he sat in his garage for about 15 years, and I ran into him one day, and he said, hey, you want those drums back? I said, yeah, sure. So I got them back, and uh, I used those to practice on. And then the other ones I bring to the bars, I try to switch them out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Play them when I can, because, you know, I don't want them sitting in the basement doing nothing. No, no, no. Um, how many bands or artists have you played with? Do you know? How many bands have I played with? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Lots, eh? Yeah, I, I can give you a list, though, yeah. later. A little, a little list? It was a lot. Mostly country up till the 2000s, I think. Okay. Because yep. that was my next question. Um, that how has your music evolved throughout the years? I must assume as trends change. Yeah, and... it's gone from classic country like Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash, the simple, simple stuff, up to like the 80s and 90s when country kind of changed a little bit with Garth Brooks and got mm. more modern and poppy and stuff. And then country kind of kind of went downhill, and I got into playing some classic rock bands. Yeah. 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 Very I've cool. always loved classic rock. That's what I played with at home. Yeah. And I'd go out and play country and make the money, but at home I'd play the, really? the hard yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 I love that. That's cool. Um, so you're currently playing for a new band, Double Down. Um, can you share with us the initiation story between the, for this band? The initiation story? Mm -hmm. Like how it started? Yeah. Uh, well, me and the bass player, Brad, left another band. And we, I just called a couple of guys that I knew and that I knew were good people and good players. And they seemed interested and we got together and had a meeting and decided what genre we wanted to do. And yeah. Awesome. Picked some songs and started learning them and went from there. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and what's the kind of music vibe of this band? It's a little bit of everything, no country, but it's kind of classic rock from the 70s up to pretty much modern stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, what's the largest crowd you've performed for? And how do you pre prepare for performances like that? Um, either the Memorial Gardens during Winterfest. Mm. There could have been a few thousand people in there, maybe up to 5,000. It said there was 5,000 people attended, but that could have been through the... Right. The day or the weekend or whatever. And then Rotary Fest is a good crowd. Always. Yeah. Yeah. At yeah. least a thousand or two. And you've played pretty much every year for a while. I think I've done about 20 or 22 times I've done Rotary Fest now. That's awesome. Because some years I've done with two, sometimes three bands. Right. Uh, just that and that one weekend. So that's why it added up like yeah, that. Yeah. But I think the first one was 2004 with That's Chester. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then we just had our reunion yeah. at our last show, yeah. Yeah, so you played this past Rotary twice. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. Almost three times. I had a country band asked to do it, but I thought, oh, it's going to be a long, <laughs> long weekend. That's, yeah, it was a long weekend. <laughs> yeah. How does it feel to perform on that stage? Because that's very oh, iconic stage for Sault Ste. Marie. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Because you get to be a rock star for an hour. Definitely. Yeah, it's fun. Definitely. Get all the lights and the big sound and... Belanger from North Bay, his sound system, they do a great job yeah. every year. Yeah. Awesome. Because when you're at a local like bar or something, you don't have like a sound tech most of the time. No, you're doing pretty that much have yourself. to do it by yourself. Yeah. So Nowadays, like, though, uh, the new band we have got a little iPad type thing okay. that you can go out and listen to it and adjust nice. it from there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Times have changed like that technology-wise for sure. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. yeah. We're ear wearing in ear monitors now instead really? of the floor yeah, wedges. Really, the floor ones, yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes a difference. It does. Yourself when when you you're singing, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Um, do you ever get nervous being on stage, or is that just what you live nope, for? That's, that's it. Just, but get me to sing around a campfire with five. No, mm. I won't do it. <laughs> I'll sing in front of ten thousand people, yeah, play drums, yeah. whatever. Can't do it in just a little yeah. private setting. I yeah, don't know I what it that. is, <laughs> but yeah. I've been to a few house parties. Sing a song, Rick. Nope. No. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to do it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's 
one you don't have to see their faces, don't have to see Maybe, their Maybe, yeah, it could be. Totally backwards, I guess. Yeah. No, I felt the same as a dancer, always on a bigger stage, the better on a smaller stage. Oh, really? Stage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, I'm the, glad I I'm not the only I one. Think it's, I think it's pretty <laughs> normal. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about recording. Uh, I think I know the answer, but have you ever published music? Um, I've done a lot of studio work. Mm -hmm. Nothing of my own material, yeah. but yeah, I've done lots of stuff, uh, mostly in the 80s when the recording studio, the proper recording studio was here, like everybody has one in their house in now, the but there yeah. was a dedicated recording studio, Satellite Sound, it was called. Did a lot of commercials and a lot of demo tapes and a couple of, 45s mm -hmm. and uh, I think one or two CDs. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I think it was like a Bon Sue jingle you were a part yep. of. Uh, Northern Heartbeat. That's a big Yeah, Sioux. that was a big Sue thing. Big Sue thing. Um, that was for the uh, the Homecoming CD. Right. Yeah. And you were on a couple tracks on that, I believe. Three or four, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What was that process like? That was fun. Met a lot of people, a lot of people uh, you, I've never played with before yeah. in the studio. So it was it was interesting. Yeah. It was a good time. And recording, you record a lot at home now, too, on your own for your own YouTube channel. I'm trying. Yeah. 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 Just try. I bought a digital interface and trying to figure out how to work all that now. <laughs> it's, I'm getting old for this stuff, so it's, <laughs> I'm taking my time. Definitely. It's more Definitely. of a winter thing. I got the raw counting thing in the summer. And yes the rocks and all that fun stuff yes making jewelry and yeah that's things. so fun <laughs> um what else do i have to ask um has there ever been a period of your life that you weren't playing the drums did you ever take a break or has it just been a constant throughout your life uh about the only break i took is when i broke my leg in a mm. motorcycle accident i was off for maybe a year well but i still ended up playing when i had all the cast and stuff on it and then i ended up buying a second bass drum in case this leg ever gave out so that's why i ended up oh, keeping okay. the two bass drums interesting yeah. yeah yeah now i use a double pedal just to save carrying two bass drums you could use a just a cheater beater they call it okay so yeah cool and well we took maybe almost a year off at this last band after brad and i left the band oh, okay just to didn't take well we had to rehearse we rehearsed for about a year almost a year and a half yeah learning new songs and took our time yeah it takes a little bit i assume it to does like i mean you can go throw a bunch of guys together and play the same old standard crap right. next week if you wanted to right. but we just wanted to you know work on it yeah have something different yeah build some put some effort into chemistry it. and yeah 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 i love it um do you have any advice for people starting to play gigs and performing uh, wear hearing aid protection if you can, because mm. at my age now I'm wearing hearing aids from banging on the drums all these years. <laughs> um, be professional, learn your parts, uh, show up on time, show up early if you can for gigs, be nice to people, mm -hmm. just do the best you can. Yeah. Yep. And any advice on keeping performing throughout your life? Because you've, you've done a great job of keeping in, doing what you um, love. You got to be versatile. Mm. You got to be a good enough musician to be able to work with other people. The people are going to want to work with you again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just do the best job you can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when's the next time you're performing? Hmm. I have a gig with a di another band that I'm filling in. I'm, I'm learning all their songs right now. We're doing a gig in Blind River at the end of August. Cool. And then I think my band is back up in September. Playing. Nice. Yeah. Where's your regular spot these days? Regular spots have been Jay's Piston Broke, which is the old Roosevelt on Core Road, and Reggie's downtown. And we're going to be getting some bookings at the Esquire pretty soon. Nice. Yep. Very nice. Let's talk about the music gallery. Um, so you turned your love for music and your job and love for history into something special here at the museum. Yeah, well, I wanted to, there's a thing called the Northern Ontario Country Music Association in town, and they honor all, all the country musicians. Okay. But there was really nothing in town for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to just have a little dedication to 
not all the local musicians, but as many as we can find and, you know, and just honor them in, in a little gallery. Definitely. Because they all deserve it. This town is amazing for musicians. Yeah. Really is. A lot of talent. Yeah. And we call the gallery naturally gifted, so it suits it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I get so many people coming through the museum and saying, oh, like, that's my, my neighbor. That's oh, my really? uncle. Oh, or, that's awesome. I saw my own picture up here. I feel old. But yeah. they, it's a, it's very nice to see them with a smile on their face and yeah, feel recognized. Yeah, that's good for the local people to come and see. Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. I remember yes. this band. And yeah. Because... It was it was a thing back then to go out and see all the bands. Definitely. And, yeah. Yeah, and even if you go out these days, like it's the the, the talent is incredible. Like it it, is. it's unbelievable. Your brother plays at a band. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I just interviewed them, so I'm on a little music kick. Cool. Um, in the next few episodes on well, the I, podcast, I can get you tons music, of music. So. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. We'll have to do it again. Good, 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 good.